So now I'm going to talk a little bit about autoregression. I'm going to talk about lagged variables and difference variables in R. This kind of goes along with what I was talking about with autocorrelation in a different video. So I'm going to use the U.S. real GDP data set that I was using before. I'm not going to use Mexico, but I'm going to pull, pull the same file. So I set my working, uh, working directory today. It's, it's F. Um, I run it. And you can see here I've got my 103 quarters for three observations. And again, always check the head of your data, make sure it looks okay. You can see it starts in the first quarter of 1993. Uh, it's this uh, tr billions of US dollars, so it starts at about 9 trillion. You can see it's three variables, it's 103 long. And we have to remember that because we're going to have to cut a variable a little bit later. So I'm going to make US real Y. So it's going to be a time series for the second column here. It's going to start. 1993 first quarter. Then I'm going to take the log of it, and remember this log is the natural log. Then I'm going to plot both side by side, so it's a one by two, one row, two columns. And I'm going to plot US real Y, and then log US real Y. And then I bring back to what I started with one by one. And so you can see they look pretty similar. You can see the Great Recession over here. And the only real thing that's different here is the scale. Right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make what's called a lag variable that's going to line up uh, a new variable that lines up next to the original variable, but it's going to be shifted by one. And so you're going to wind up with the, uh, the first quarter 1993 next to the second quarter 1993 and so forth, all the way to the end where you have the last variable next to the second last variable. All right. And so we're going to make that, and uh, the command for that, uh, first of all, I call it lag. So it's lag log US real Y and the lag in parentheses. And remember, to make it back in time, you use negative 1. And if you ha didn't have that, then you would actually make what's called a lead, and you would actually push it the other direction. And so I make this lag variable here. And then what I'm going to also do is I'm going to make a difference variable. And so what this does is subtracts the variable at one point in time minus its previous value. So it actually takes the original minus the lag. And it's basically a delta. It's a, you know, a third quarter 2018 minus second quarter 2018, and it gives you the change. Right? So I'm going to plot that. And because it's logs, that actually gives us the growth rate. That approximates percentage changes. Right? So here is uh, the log difference of US real GDP. And you can see this big downturn in the Great Recession and so forth. Right? So well, I'm also going to make a lag difference. So I'm going to combine the two just because we're going to need it a little bit later. But that is uh, the lag of this new variable we created. All right, so now I've got four variables I made, or actually I made three, and including the original variable, then we got four. So we've got the original GDP, lag GDP, difference, and then lag difference. So I'm going to put them all together. I'm going to call it data two. I'm going to combine the four, combine the four, the four that I made. Right, so it's uh, those four that I just mentioned, and always check your head. And here you check the tail because we're going to see something interesting. So first of all. You lose an observation when you lag because there's nothing before this to put next to it. And then, of course, when you difference, it's the same thing. Now, look here. If you subtract these, right, 9.20 minus 9.195 is about 0 0.005. So this is the difference between the two. And so you lose an observation because, you, because there's nothing to take a difference from here. Right? If you lag this, right, now you can see that it's next to its previous value. You lose a second observation. So anytime you do legs, you lose at least an observation each thing you do. Um, and if you do a big thing like monthly data, sometimes 24 a month, you could lose you know, dozens of data points. That's something to keep in mind. But we're going to see that if you look at the head, we lose these here. Those aren't going to compute. And then here we have this 104th data uh, observation where there was no nothing to put. This was the end of our set, but it shifts up to make the lag. And so this is actually shouldn't be there. We're going to cut it off. Right? So I'm going to remove. The 104th row here, I remember this is negative 104, which means take off 104 row, and then column is left here, so it's every, you know, everything uh, for all columns. Right? So now if we do that, we will see that it now should end in 103. So again, you can see that this 102nd variable is next to the 103rd, and so forth. All right, now, we are going to do what's called an autoregression. We're going to regress log US real GDP on itself. So it's going to be on its lagged value. The idea is that past values predict present values, present values predict future values. Now, you might not want to do this for a rising series. Uh, it's called non stationary series. Um, basically speaking, non stationarity means that the, at least the mean, sometimes the variance, is changing over time. So as GDP rises, you would see uh, the average rise you know, around the rising value. And so the mean is non-stationary. And uh, what they call strong stationarity is when the variance is also unchanging over time. So we want something where the mean is independent of time. And that's not going to happen when GDP is rising. 
So, but I'm going to do it, it kind of works here. So what I'm going to do is make a regression. I'm going to call it reg one, because we're going to have two regressions here. It's the linear model. We're going to do column one, which is the original GDP, on the lagged value. Right? And you make an object here, it's not going to show up. There's, it, it becomes a new value over here. We're going to take the summary of it. We're going to see the coefficient is close to 1, meaning that future values are pr pretty close to present values. Um, T values are ridiculously high, P values are ridiculously small. So it's, you know, almost, and look at the R square, 0.999. And so uh, normally you would not do a regression like this. Interestingly enough, if you plot the residuals, um, first of all, you get a scatter plot, uh, maybe over time, but if you do it with plot TS, you actually can plot it as a time series. And then you can see that they may, may actually be stationary. Right? You can see this is, you would probably want to put some sort of a dummy variable here to control for the financial crisis, but um, it actually seems like it works. But uh, we can test this formally. So there's a number of what we call stationarity tests. Most common is something called the Dickey Fuller which is augmented by adding lags. Um, choosing the number of lags to put on is sometimes uh, tricky, so the Phillips-Perone test gets around in a different way. So I usually use the Phillips-Perone stationarity test. We want it to be, uh, it's going to be a negative number, but we want a large number, um, uh, the statistic, to show that the variable is uh, stationary. So here, if it gives the Dickey Fuller, um, again, it's the, lag per the lag parameter is what makes it different from the augmented daily. Uh, Dickey Fuller. You can see here that this is really, really a large and absolute value. P value is really, really small. So you could, yeah, the re residuals are most likely stationary. All right? But if you do the same test for, first of all, regular non log GDP, you could see that this number is now insignificant. Um, and so that shows that GDP is non stationary. And because it's rising, right, you can imagine that that it would not be hard to see if it was stationary, so I can kind of come back to that and show you. Um, you this, this is clearly a non-stationary series, right? It's, it's rising over time, and the average is rising with it, right? Do the same test for log GDP, sort of the same thing. It is clearly uh, non-stationary, and so most economists would uh, difference or do co-integration or do something to, to take uh, that into account, right? So I'm going to do uh, the difference value. So I'm going to do a regression of growth rates, which is column three, on lagged growth rates, right? So that's the changes, and because it's log changes, that's how we get the growth rate. So I'll call it reg two, all right? Make a new object here. We could see here, if you know the coefficients, that this is both significant um, and, and not quite as large of a coefficient here. R squared is actually a lot smaller, so maybe that's a little bit better. But we're just doing a bivariate regression. It doesn't really mean too much now. Um, if you know about what an autoregressive process or ARIMA modeling, you can do the AR function, which is autoregressive, and it tells you an order one. Right? So this is an AR1, which is what we just did. It's autoregressive on one leg back, and then you can change that number and get different lag lengths. So if you do that, almost the same slight differences in how it's calculated. Right? And you can also do it as ARIMA, which if you know that, here there's no uh, integration because we already differenced it. There's no moving average component. And here you can see it's fairly close, although slightly different. Right? So finally I'm going to make a table, right? And this is kind of just to see how to turn your output into a table uh, without any elaborate you know, packages or anything like that. So, first of all, if you do this, this is the, f uh, there's a number of components in this number, but if you do this four, all right, notice how it's in there. We're doing the summary, but we're going to take this one component from it. We actually get only the coefficients. Now, if you know how regressions work, there's always the point or the coefficient estimate here, and then you get the standard error, T value, and then what we call the pre P value, which is the probability. And these are all, remember, very close to zero because these are E to the negative you know, large exponents, right? Now, again, if you've seen this before, this is our main measure, but most people don't include it as much anymore. It is useful if you are going to do other tests other than whether the coefficient is different from zero. But if you were to divide this, like 0.38 divided by 0.093, it's roughly 40 over 10, or roughly 4. The T value is the ratio of these two. And then if you had your normal distribution, you would see that a large T value, or, or maybe a, probably more likely a T distribution, but the same, it's the same curve shape. If you were to have, uh, if you were to be four standard deviations from the mean, you'd be extremely at the small end of the tail, and this P value is pretty close, to, uh, probably mathematically almost zero. Right. So normally in, in econometrics, you would only choose one of these, and my choice is always the probability, the p-value. Well, I'm going to do the t-value today because that, that's a pretty safe one. So when you do your table, you're only going to want the coefficient, and you're only going to want the t-value. And because there's too many decimal places, I'm going to round it to three.
Okay, so first of all, I have what I just did. I'm going to call it table one, right? So that's a new object, and then I'm going to do the table one coefficients, but it's only going to be the uh, one comma three, right? So it's going to be all ro all rows, and this be columns one and three. And if you see that here, now I've got the two things I want. Even though they're not rounded, I've just got the two columns of the four that I wanted. I'm going to make my rewrite my table and make it that. All right. So then, because it's kind of got some ugly names to it, I'm going to add some row names, and I'm going to round it. So my row names will be constant, and then L and Y lag one. All right. We could probably more more accurately call it D L N Y negative one. All right. And so if you do that, you can run it. And now we've got the log, excuse me, the the lagged difference log, lag log difference, right? So that's a pretty nice table, right? So now I am going to do something called concatenate. I'm going to actually combine these. Now these are two separate columns, and that's usually fine, and you see that. But it's nicer to have all of this together, maybe with some value in parentheses. So I'm going to take this, combine the columns, put parentheses around this number here. And do it for both columns, right? So I'm going to have two. I call it T1 and T2. It's the two rows here. And again, there's probably a more efficient way to do it. I could do it as a loop. I could do some other things, but I'm just keeping it simple here. And I'm going to take round table one one, and round it to three. So it's here, right? One one. And then I'm going to add this. Now notice, comma says, tell me something new. The new thing is parentheses space. Excuse me. It's space open parentheses. And so I'm saying, please add space open parentheses in here, and then put one two in here, right? And you tell it to round again because it forgot that I rounded it. Um, it doesn't permanently do it, so I have to tell it to do it again. And then I'm going to do it rounding to three decimal places again. And then I say, okay, what am I adding then? Comma tells me what's new, and I say, please add a close parenthesis. Then you can have sep the separator means that there's nothing in between. It's not comma separator or space or anything like that. Right. Do the same thing for two. I only here I'm doing row two, one, and I round it to three places. Put in space, open parentheses. Then I put in this two, two, round it to three, and then I say, please put in a close parentheses. Right. So if I were just to do that, then I've got T1 and T2, and I can even type that in. All right. It's got these quotes, which I'm going to take care of in a second, but it's got the formatting that I want. So I'm going to row, row bind these, T1 and T2, and then I'm going to also add R squared. All right. So in the summary of Reg 2, Regression 2, you can get the R squared, which is our goodness of fit, and we're going to uh, round that to 3 as well. All right. So now we have our three rows, and we have our coefficient and our parentheses, and we have our R squared, but I want to remove the quote, so I'm going to use the no quote. All right, and just redo it here. And doing that takes that off. And then finally, I'm going to give it row names. Constant, DLNY1, and R squared. All right, and then column names, I'm going to say coefficient and T statistic. And that's going to say, here's the coefficient and what is in parentheses. Remember, with any regression, you always have to say what is in those parentheses, because if it's standard error, it's going to be, look different in terms of what's significant. All right, so now I'm going to say here's table two. And here's my basic, basic table that I made in R. All right, and so it's got kind of the formatting you need. It says what's in the rows and what's in the columns, and it tells you everything you need. It's it's fairly concise, and it's all basically one row of cells. All right. So finally, I'm going to write to a CSV file if if you want to take an Excel, you know, or or put it in a Word document. I'm going to use write.csv. Take table two. I'm going to call it table two CSV. All right, and that will actually put it on my drive if I can find it. And somewhere in here should be table two. And here's my simple table. So that you can use in some other software. Again, there's more complicated ways to do it, but I just wanted to show how to concatenate and put stuff in there. So what I did so far today was I talked about making log variables, lag variables, difference variables, and then the concept of autocorrelation, where we're going to regress a variable on itself. And the way to do it is you can do it, one, as a regression, two, you could do it as an AR process, or third, as an ARIMA process. But either way, um, you get this, this model where it's a regression with regression output. I also tested for stationarity, talked a little bit about Phillips Perone test. You can use more formal tests. But at the end, we made a table that showed the coefficient estimates of this regression.